morning. Once again, I'm out for my morning walk. It was Father's Day here yesterday and spent the day really meditating about being a father and kept coming back, of course I would, kept coming back to the things that are going on in the Bitcoin Cash community and how being a father and being the spiritual leader, if you will, of your family is one of the most important roles that you can play. And I was just really meditating on fatherhood. I'm a father of two children. One is four years old and one is one years old. So this is my fourth Father's Day as a father. It's something that I never thought that I wanted to do to have children, but I met a wonderful woman and was the first woman that I ever thought that I would have children with her. And I'm glad that I made that decision because it has been, of all the experiences that I've had in my life, and I've led quite the life, uh, being a father has definitely been the peak experience. And it's really gotten me back in touch with my own spirituality over these years. And I see the reason why this notion of a father as the spiritual leader of a family has stuck around, why it emerged, and what it means to be a leader. And I've worked really hard in that time to, to demonstrate to my children what that means and how much I care about them. They don't get to choose their father. We don't get to choose our father. And so that is a, a role of leadership that is thrust upon somebody. And I think in our society now, the idea that the father is the, a leader of a family or should take that leadership responsibility onto himself, I think can rub people the wrong way because they think about leader and they think ideas like dictator or they think, uh, you know, manager, boss. Whereas that's not really what leadership means or what leadership is. And for me, it's leading by example. My children don't get to choose their father. And so I have a burden upon me to show them by example, how to push through adversity, how to deal with, with pain and with tragedy and with loss in a way where you come out better on the other side, how to appreciate friends and family, how to be generous, compassionate, how to use kindness as a strength, as opposed to, um, you know, being, being weak and that being viewed as kindness. All of those things, that's what a leader is supposed to do. A leadership is about leading by example, really. It's about finding somebody going in a direction and standing in front of them and also taking the, the shots that come with it. And so I wanted to give a message to the leaders of either side of this incoming fork, which I think after my video and then the conversation that's been started, uh, I, I think I was a catalyst for exposing and framing a, a conversation that was already under underway. Um, and so I'm glad that I could, you know, play a leadership role in doing that. I want to say something to the leaders and the leaders that that will that are there and the leaders that will emerge through these sort of two sides in what's coming up in this fork and i'll preface this by saying that although i believe a fork is inevitable i don't believe that a contentious war and battle is inevitable and i think that it's really going to be a question of how leaders on either side react and what burden they're willing to take on to themselves and so just before I say that, again, three ideas, three ideas that kept coming up. I think that conditionals are best with three. So if X and Y and Z, then else. So the three principles that really came up for me with leadership is the first thing is there are leaders in Bitcoin, period. I've been saying this many, I've said this many times. I've been saying this for a long time. It's something that for some reason, core and the BTC cult have decided it's a weird meme because it's a nonsensical meme and I can only think that the purpose of that meme is to uh, is to manipulate people really because it, where in human affairs do leaders not emerge you can't get a group of people together for very long 
have them hang out even in a voluntary situation and even if it's not a an environment where they're set leaders per se leaders will emerge if you get together 10 guys to play pickup basketball leaders will emerge from out of each team it just happens uh, if you get women together to plan a, uh, a father's day party right and all of the wives and mothers are going to get together and plan the the day for the husbands and fathers leaders will emerge whether that's by age whether that's by competence because one is a interior designer or one is a chef or whatever it is uh, a caterer these things they they emerge there are leaders in bitcoin just like there are leaders in in any human endeavor and bitcoin again is a social endeavor and the second thing is that any leader who is worth following will view leadership as a burden. Uh, they, will, they will take it on to themselves, but they will do so begrudgingly. Uh, it's not something that they will be actively out and pursuing. In other words, what the, the leader that you would want to follow is that would be worthy of being followed because they understand what leadership is would say just as with fatherhood this is a burden but i'm going to take it onto my shoulders because if i don't nobody else will that's that's really the um that's really the mark of a good leader and that should be the litmus test of any leader that is that has your best intentions or has has your best outcomes at heart you should be immediately suspect of any leader who wants leadership because that person is either one of two things either one there's some sort of a control freak psychopath which i think is probably um less common i think that's more rare because psychopaths are relatively rare but that is a possibility or two they're not an experienced leader because an experienced leader understands what a responsibility and what work leadership is. You know, a lot of people say that they want to own a business and they want to be an entrepreneur until they realize the owner of the business shows up first because he opens the door and he leaves last because he locks behind him. And the owner of the business gets paid last. So if you've ever worked for a business, and I'm sure you have, and you might not have even known it, that wasn't making a profit, the owner of the business wasn't getting paid even though you as an employee were. So that's something to think about. That's the burden of leadership. And then the other, the third thing, and this is really important for Bitcoin, but it's also important when you look at the, the nature of governments and the state, is that you can only get truly good leadership decisions, truly um, beneficial decisions about leadership when leadership is voluntary. That's a that's like a super 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 important um, realization that people need to have, and and that is to say that if there's no alternative, so like you'll always get the IRS. There's no competition to the IRS, and why would the IRS act and behave in a reasonable way, ever? Uh, as long as there's no competition. They're the IRS. There's only one IRS. That's it. So those are the three things to keep in mind as we move forward. And really what we have opportunity here for is for the leaders of these emergent, these two emergent chains that are going to emerge out of the, this fork to take the burden of leadership onto themselves and to, to allow an amicable split. Um, I believe that that's going to mean giving up some things that people uh, necessarily would want, like the ticker symbol. You're probably going to have to just decide that that's not a big deal. It also may mean looking bad and having uh, people who are going to do it anyway uh, claim that, oh, you're trying to cause a split. You're trying to attack uh, Bitcoin, which we've heard before. You're going to have to take that on yourself. But it's about leading by example. And it's just a few leaders who can actually do this. 
this can actually be done and we can have an amicable split and the sooner the better if this if this split doesn't happen in november the time between november and may is going to be absolute hell and it's going to to drop the reputation of everybody involved and the price of the coin there's no question about it and there's some people that would love to keep that continuing because this drama is giving them a platform and it's made them uh quote unquote uh celebrities within the community for nothing else than being on one side of the drama but we don't need leaders in the drama we need leaders on these two forks and so what i'm looking forward to very much so is abc showing its leadership in being able to uh compromise and not even compromise is not the right word in 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 doing things that that are not necessarily in their benefit if they were going to fight a war but are concessions that they would make if what they're pursuing is peace and on the other side, from the BCHN group, stepping out from being about a reaction, a step forward as leaders and act as though you already have your own chain. And let's hear, talk to me about, and talk to the community. But tell me as a business owner why I should be picking your leadership of your chain and why that is beneficial to me. Um, regardless, act as though ABC doesn't even exist. Act as though none of that happened because that's what you're going to wind up with. Just like Bitcoin SV is in that situation now. And just like it hasn't done us any good for years in Bitcoin Cash to talk about all of the things that Core is doing wrong. How, <laughs> like, what's the point? What's the point of that? So I would like to hear from leaders of BCHN, like, what should we expect from your fork? How will it be different? How will it be more beneficial? How will it benefit my business? How will it benefit traders? How will it benefit miners? ABC has been clear about this. They've got a roadmap. Are you continuing the roadmap? You know, you don't like this hard fork schedule. What will your schedule look like then? And that's the taking on the leadership. And only a few people need to do this. And if it's done, people will take the burden of leadership onto themselves and lead by example in that way. We can have an incredibly beneficial outcome of this. We can look back on this and say, God, that was the right move. Just as you would in a relationship that's fallen apart, but you, you separate at the right time away from each other and then you can actually still be friends with your ex or with this person who was once your friend or with uh, a, a former employer right you leave the company but you leave in a way that is amicable where you both understand that yeah it was time for us to go and to grow and to do different things and i've had situations where i've even been able and that person has remained a mentor we've done business together again as business partners our two two separate businesses together and this is the type of thing where there's a lot of overlap between developers a lot of the innovations that come from one chain can be used on the other it's actually a great opportunity in that regard and so this fork is going to happen period i don't care if people say that i'm spreading fud i'm not i'm telling you the truth and if you don't see it now or if you're trying to convince people that it's not going to happen i don't think that you're worthy of being listened to at this point this is a, a human experiment. This is a, a human project. And human behavior is at play here. So there's an opportunity of leadership. Whether this was chosen for you or whether you chose it, if you're a leader in these two camps, the burden is on you. And what you do in the coming months is going to determine really the fate of this network certainly for uh, years to come. So that's my message for those fathers out there. Happy Father's Day. And if you're not a father and you're on the fence about it, don't be. It's one of the greatest experiences on earth. So happy Father's Day, guys.